Ibn Abbas. So even if our children, our youngsters, no more Qur'an, put them up in the front. They're young men. Let them lead the salah. But we don't respect this, some, sadly, we don't respect this aspect of our deen, and we should. Okay, and this will help them. This will help them be more responsible. Moving right along, could we go up, please? Subtle mistakes, or lahn al-khafi, al-khafi is hidden. You know, it's a hidden mistake that, like I said, is only blatant to the one who's an expert in the Qur'an or he's working with it. He starts to notice these subtleties. He notices the language. He says, oh, these type of mistakes include when you don't give the right respect to the sifat of the letters. Okay? And this is something, again, ta'awud alayha. You get used to it. You get used to hearing the proper pronunciation of the letters. They said the right word, but they didn't give it. He didn't give it all that he had to give it. And when he said, um, Rob, he said, Reb. Okay? Now we know Ra is Tafkhiman. Okay? In Hafs ibn An Asim, you do Ra. All the Ra are Ra. Kathirun. Right? As opposed to Kathira. You don't say Kathire. Not in Hafs and Asim. In Warsh, you do. But, and some of the other qira'ah, but we're talking about hafs and asam, and we'll get to that in a moment. So this is a mistake. It's not a major mistake, it's a subtle mistake. But who would know it? Only someone who knows the different qira'ah. You understand that? You with me, or no? And that's it. You're talking about it, it, you have in tarqiq and tafkhim. Okay, some have the argument about it with the ya. It's preceded by the ya. I use kathira with a ya. It has sukun over it. You would still make it tafkhim in, in hafs. In hafs and asam, they make it tafkhim. And we can look it up in, uh, when we finish. Okay? I have it right there. Pass them the book with, um, in the green book in the back. You can find it. In, in, in uh, hafs and asam, you can see what his, his water, his. Um, Rules are right there with regards to that. But the point here is that if, it, if someone makes it with a, tef, with a tarqiq or ra in a place of a tafkhim or ra, this is not a major mistake. Or this is a subtle mistake. Do you understand that? It's the, the green book in the back. Okay, going down, let's say, say for forgetting to make idhar or ghunna or elongating where it's short. You see, some people, they say, qala ibrahim, when it's actually qala ibrahimu. If they extend it longer where it's supposed to be short, then this is, a, this is not a major mistake. Again, this is a subtle mistake because it doesn't change the meaning of the word. It's just not to be recited in that way. You understand? Okay, check out the book. In the first couple of pages, you have the uh, um, farsh of each one of the different Quran. Okay? All right. Let's go down. Okay. Now we have the next part. It's, this is Qira'at Riwayat Turuq Omar. It's lions and tigers and bear. Omar, oh right? You have Qira'at Riwayat and Turuq Omar. Oh Here, why am I talking about this? Lots of people mix up a lot of issues when it comes to Tajweed. There are a few issues here. You have Qira'a, you have Riwayat, and you have Turuq. They all have a different meaning. Some of them mix with Tajweed, but they are not actually Tajweed in itself, by itself, okay? For example, let's go and find out what Qira'ah is. Why? Because in studying Tajweed, you have to know the specific meaning of what we're talking about, okay? So when we mention Qira'ah, what are we talking about? We're talking about any difference in reciting the Qur'an that is attributed to one of the, that is attributed to, attributed to, attributed, what does he say? Attributed, mm, I can't say that word attributed to one of the ten imams of the Qur'an is considered a qira'ah. The ten imams of the Qur'anic recitation are Nafi al-Madani, Ibn Kathir al-Makki, Abu Amr al-Basri. Let me stop here and, and talk to you for a second before we go through this because I don't want to just give you a bunch of names and this was the difficulty that I had with, with preparing this lesson because I don't want to give you things that you're not going to use, that you don't need as a beginner. Okay? And sometimes you know, people say, oh, well, you should have said, you know, listen, a beginner doesn't need to know all these 10 names of these people. But I'm going to just m put them there so you can see who they are and mention just briefly about them because it's, right now it's not really important for you to know that. What you need to know is what does it mean to be a, an imam of the Quran? 
That's what you need to know. And to become an imam or to be considered one of the ten imams, there's only ten imams, and the Qur'an was revealed in seven, how do we correspond, how do we correlate those two differences? The Qur'an was revealed in seven ahruf, right? These are not the seven ahruf. These are not the seven letters through which the Qur'an was revealed, but they encompass the seven. Okay? How those seven are, we don't necessarily know exactly right now. And it's enough for us to say, Allahu A'lam. What we do know is that these ten men were known, were famous for their recitation and learning from the Sahaba. If they didn't learn directly from the Sahaba, they learned from Tabi'een who learned directly from Sahaba. And they learned even from each other. Some of these men are students of each other along with being students of Tabi'een and students of Sahaba. And so they were the closest and they became famous for their recitation of Qur'an. Okay? So much so that they would say the recitation of Nafi. Al-Madani, why? Because he was in Medina. And in the Qira'ah of Nafi, you have all the people of Medina reciting it. You have those people who, who, who are not familiar with the Qira'ah of Nafi. Sometimes when they hear it, they say, what are you doing? But they don't understand. This was the Qira'ah of Ahmed ibn Hanbal and his most famous Qira'ah. He, I mean, his most favorite Qira'ah, not famous. His most favorite. He was asked, What's your favorite qira'ah? He said the qira'ah of Warsh al-Nafi. Okay? What was the qira'ah of Imam Malik? The qira'ah of Imam Nafi. So all the people of Medina recited by the qira'ah of Nafi. Then you have Ibn Kathir al-Makki. He was the Imam of Mecca during his time. You have also Abu Amr al-Basri. They say Abu Amr al-Basri or Ibn Amr al-Shami. Ibn Amr al-Shami has... No. Ibn Abu Amr al-Basri... Learned from more people than anybody else. He learned from more shiyukh than anybody can ever say. They have so many routes of qira that they can name so many different sahaba coming back to his turuq. On his route, coming back to him. And then you have Ibn Amr al-Shami who was considered the imam in Sham during the time of Abdul Aziz Ibn Umar. Okay, so you have some fam these people or famous shiyukh. Asim al-Kufi. Asim. Here you have the one, the most famous qira'ah in the world today is the qira'ah of Asim. But we know it as Hafs and Asim, okay, from his student Hafs. But in actuality, Asim is the one who did the recital. Hamza, Hamza is the most jazz in me. It sounds so jazzy, that style. It has the pauses. People notice it. They think it's Warsh when they hear it. They think it's the qira'ah of Nafi. Constantly people hear Hamza and they think it's Nafi because they don't know the names of the qira'ah. So when they hear the taqlil or the imala, all these types of things, they attribute it to the wrong person. But Hamza is the one that has the pauses, shay, in, like this, and those types of things, you find it. Al-Kisai, Abu Jafar, these, after we get after Kisai, and you had other people like Abu Jafar, whose, whose qira'ah was considered one of the seven, but then they moved his position. And it's his moving of position wasn't something because he was worse than somebody else. What happened here, and I don't, and Khalaf is a student of Hamza who was not only a student, he had his own qira'ah. So, you know, you, and you, you, you can go through these men and say these were the men who recited the Qur'an, so much so that a man, a, a scholar by the name of Ibn Mujahid, he wrote a book, and in a book he named it the Book of Qira'ah. Okay, this is how we got these qira'ah. The Book of Qira'ah named seven people, just not those other three, he named seven. These are the famous qira'ah of our time. These are the best men reciting Qur'an. And so everybody, you know the people do, they left all the other qira'ah. There was much more than this. There were other famous people. However, what do the people do? They go with what's famous, right? They left all those other, they stopped studying them, and they only studied these. Okay? So now we don't have those so much now. And all those that we do find, they're considered irregular or they're considered unacceptable. Because what we do have are these. So when we talk about the ten imams, these are the men we're talking about. The three that we're going to focus on is Imam Nafi, Imam Asim, and Imam Hamza. Just three. Okay? Because these are the ones that most people know. Now people do know others, but right now we're going to deal with those three. Okay? Because they're very unique. Plus they're the only three I know. <laughs> so... <laughs> We're going to go down and do these, okay? 